Hi, everybody. Thank you for being here. This will talk with a little bit more practical, less Node.js and stuff like this. OK, but there will be some anyway. Um, this talk will be about addresses that look like this with a hashtag or a little bit more crawlable if we put an exclamation mark in the beginning of the, the hash fragment. Or the URL can be simply perfect if there is no hash at all. OK. Um, a little bit of history, how this whole thing started. You know, probably 10 years ago, uh, everything on the web was about multimedia interactivity. Uh, the years where Flash gained ground. And uh, the first uh, information on this subject was uh, published by Kevin Lynch, who is now a CTO of Adobe at that time a CTO of Macromedia. And he was the first guy that showcased how the address can be manipulated uh, using uh, plain JavaScript back in 2004. So later, if you have heard of really simple history, a year later in 2005, this was one of the first libraries that enabled uh, such behavior in the browser. At that time, I was interested in that subject. And a, a year later, um, I released this library. It was primarily targeted for Flash websites because the Flash website, websites also has such problems with uh, linking to specific sub pages of a website or an application. And uh, this really has become the standard for deep linking in the Flash world. And later it was used also on a variety of Ajax powered websites. So nowadays, uh, this functionality is provided out of the box by many frameworks. So you can probably very easily start using it. And really, lots of clients need such functionality. And in case you use jQuery, I believe most of you do. Nowadays, these are the, the best plugins that enable such functionality in um, jQuery. OK. Um, I'd like to, to show you a few examples of what this this actually doing. So here is a, a showcase of the Swi of websites that uh, use the Swift address uh, project. Uh, these are primarily Flash websites. I hope that uh, in the near future we'll see lots of these rich experience websites implemented using Canvas and some more hardware accelerated features of HTML5. But basically, these are websites created by l large agencies, and, um, and they have uh, really provided me with uh, lots of quality feedback how this uh, solution actually works for them. A typical website that need such a functionality is like Converse. So you can do a search. They automatically change the address. I'm not sure how exactly they keep the state because the, the deep link here does not contain the, the exact query string. But you can go jump and select a model select a color, and uh, you always have a unique link uh, in the address bar. Also, the bug button is working as it should, and you get a real experience 
typical for the standard web pages. Okay, I, after this Swift address project, I have developed a jQuery plugin that basically enables the same functionality for uh, jQuery. A typical example of uh, such functionality is needed by image galleries. So here, uh, the Guardian website uses this for this library for uh, their image galleries. And there can be some funny things. I will try to show you, but let's see if the, site, the sound is good enough. So this is a funny website by a Swedish web agency using different keys. You can create some sort of loops and each of these key presses uh, generates an address change. So you can then copy this in a new tab and your re recording will be played automatically. No, oh, it, it was just this. So basically you can use the, the address bar as a place to, to store some sort of a state for your, for your website or application. Okay, so uh, do you really need a dedicated library for this? Many people find it really easy to manipulate the location hash uh, manually. So there are really there are really hard times uh, detecting this behavior in every browser. Uh, historically, uh, you may see that uh, there are different cases, even for browsers like Safari 2, that you may not want to support today. But if it's doable, why, why not? So Internet Explorer was typically us using a hidden iframe to detect the pressing of the back and forward buttons. Um, this was monitored in Firefox uh, 1 to 3, Safari and Opera using a constant interval that runs uh, each 50 seconds. Uh, later, we had the on hash change event introduced by Internet Explorer 8. And now there is a new feature in HTML5 <coughs> on pop state, a new event, a new kind of functionality that we'll talk a little bit more. So in addition to, to, to this uh, browser obstruction, um, a dedicated solution can, can provide a lot of uh, different features. For example, you can have uh, sort of query kind of param parameters in the address and you can easily set and parse them. Uh, you can have special events uh, because usually these kind of um, events come from the back and forward button. You can enter something manually in, uh, in the address. It's one type of event. And another type of event if the user interface or the website is manually clicked or uh, some kind of other interaction has happened. So you may want to track these kind of virtual pages uh, using Google Analytics and uh, the projects I'm uh, developing are automatically doing this for you. You can have a fallback for some modern features that uh, you may not want to support. Uh, you may want to support old browsers you can disable the history if you want, so you just can generate deep links without enabling the, bug, the back button functionality. And sometimes there are some scrolling issues because these hashtags, they correspond to IDs of HTML tags and so that the page can jump up and down if there is a lot of content. 
So one of the common misunderstanding that uh, people that are new to this, um, here I have provided some jQuery code. Uh, most of the people are used to, to this approach of where they, they, have, they have an event uh, bound to, to the on click of a link, for example, and they start directly with making an AJAX request that loads some dynamic content, and then they try to use, for example, the address plugin to, to change the address value. And they don't know what to do the, with the event of the plugin that gets fired. There is a change event that gets fired each time when uh, the address is changed. So when you want to develop something like this, uh, you need to forget about this manual interaction, these click events, because uh, you need to make your website work like a RESTful application, like a RESTful protocol, because uh, all the information you need to render the specific state is a part of the address. So all this AJAX loading and stuff like this should be moved into the change event so that the AJAX can be loaded even if the page is directly loaded using a specific address. The format of the hash fragment also matters. And uh, there are libraries and plugins that uh, use some really strange formats for serializing um, data into the hash part of the address. And it's really better to, to, to use something like the second format, which is uh, very typical for the web as we have it today. Also, lots of people find it uh, really easier to directly redirect to something like a home hash tag because they find it easier to deal with a hash that has a value rather that, than a one that is just an empty. And uh, this usually leads to um, one history entry in the, in the browser because if you, when you open foo.com, if you directly jump to foo.com hash home, uh, you end up with a history entering the browser that is not uh, desirable. For example, one of the, one of the samples that we have that, sorry. Here is a sample that utilizes the jQuery UI tabs widget and in order to to add this functionality to this widget it was mandatory to to have the overview hash automatically inserted the first time when the page is opened so but it's done in a way that when you hit the back button you don't end up on the same page without the hash part and it's doable, it's uh, just something like uh, you have to, you must have in, in mind because it's a bad practice. You can use the location replace method to insert the home hash without generating a history entry. And if you want to end up with something that can be crawled by a search engine bot, you need to think about progressive enhancement and how the links that you have in the website can be followed by clients that don't have uh, JavaScript support. So especially for flash websites, uh, it's a huge problem with uh, 
search engine index indexing, and the same applies to more rich Ajax-powered uh, mm -hmm. websites. So one of the the approach I was using for for years, and uh, it was working. Just give me a moment to find it. Okay, so the Ajax sample that we this sample is deployed for about two years, and the pages that are in there are successfully indexed by the three major uh, search engines. But it's not the best solution because here, the address here does not contain the hash symbol. And when you open the website, uh, it's automatically replaced with the hash part of the address. And the problem in general with the, with the hash part of the address is that it's not sent to the server. And you cannot render the website like this uh, using a server-side technology because you don't have access to the hash part, which is only available in, in, to the browser. So there are different tricks. You, you making this possible with URL rewriting, which can be considered as cloaking <coughs> by Google because they have strict policies regarding this. And alternatively, it can be done using JavaScript redirection, and you have to guess that the search engine won't execute this particular JavaScript. Another uh, bad thing is that if somebody goes to this website and copies the address from the address bar and inserts it into his website just to provide a link to your content, uh, such, a, such a link won't be followed properly by the search engine because the search engine will always see and crawl the, the real part of the address, not the hash fragment, fragment in, in addition. In this specific sample, there is a copy link to clipboard, here link, and it copies the address without the hash, but it's not a perfect solution. If you want to do search engine optimization, uh, the sitemap.xml is an important helper for, for, for making your uh, URLs visible to search engines because now it's supported and adopted by, it was originally invented by Google and then both Yahoo and uh, Microsoft uh, adopted it and you can submit a sitemap to these search engines. You can easily generate it dynamically with not that much piece of code. And they are generated available for various CMS systems. <coughs> so recently, um, Google introduced a new approach. that has some Ajax content inside. But because this, this part is not visible to the server, they will actually fold, follow this. They will actually pink your server with this second uh, request that contains a query parameter called escape fragment. It's it's a solution, it's kind of solution, kind of a solution to the problem. Uh, the bad thing is that uh, it's still not officially adopted by, by 
any other major vendor. And um, I don't know, hopefully it, this may change or this will be probably not the right way to achieve this. So uh, this was uh, proposed by the GW team. Um, probably I have there. This is the website of the specification. And this is the, the showcase, their example that showcases how um, the address here is changed in a way that it can be crawled. The bad thing is that if you open it here, the, the JavaScript is disabled in, the, in this browser. Uh, with GWT, you, you see this. Uh, it's basically not uh, friendly if you have uh, JavaScript disabled. What, what, what we did um, in our sample to support this is to, to make it work even if, uh, even if JavaScript is disabled. So when the JavaScript is disabled, uh, the whole address is changed like this with the escape fragment in there and uh, when, when you see the website in a JavaScript enabled browser, uh, the address is changed using their convention. Okay, so it's definitely something to check, to check out, but I'm not that confident in, in, in the future of, uh, of this approach. With HTML5, we have the on hash change event, which was introduced in Explorer 8, and it really helps uh, the detection of uh, hash fragment changes. It was, uh, it was also added to Firefox and to Safari and WebKit Chrome. And it's, it works fine. It basically eliminates the need of intervals or hidden iframes or solutions like this. But the real deal is basically the, what was introduced later, the push state and replace state and on pop state uh, additions to the HTML5 specification. Because this is how a push state sample looks like. I just took it from the Mozilla documentation. This will be introduced in Firefox 4 and it's already available in WebKit browsers. So, when I develop such things, um, I want to do them stateless as much as possible. And uh, basically, for such deep linking, you don't need the first parameter, the actual state, because uh, if you want to, to keep the whole state as a part of the address, you basically need this part here, the last one. And when you have such think enabled, okay, I'll have a, I have a sample, uh, a sample developed in, in Node.js because this is cool, you know. The address is now changed without any hash parts in the address and it's like a real address. So, um, the bad thing here is that you need to still need, need to support old browsers and when you enter this in a Firefox 3.6, this technique is not, this uh, API is still not available and you still get the address here. On the server, the actual Node.js code looks like this. It was uh, this whole thing is developed using Express, uh, the Express framework, and um, which maps to, to every request made to the server. And now you see this Ajax part of the URL, the contact part. You can directly handle it on the server side and directly output the content if the to both 
non-JavaScript-enabled clients and um, and search engine bots. Even here, if I disable the JavaScript, uh, is it, if it's disabled, okay. This whole thing works, and it will be followed by a search engine bot. And hopefully, this may, be, may get introduced in IE9, and the whole drama about making Ajax scrollable is going to end. Thank you. Go on. Okay. Okay. Not sure. Not sure. Sounds like you will break the, the whole dome of the page if you open it and start writing to it. Haven't tried it. But for IE, especially there is a document domain thing that is pretty dangerous if you want cross-domain interaction using subdomains. There I have used document open, but it's just in initialization phase, not at such a later stage. Okay, thanks again. Have a good time.